let's talk about OSPF. Today we will improve our OSPF design by improving the time it takes to converge, improve the time that it takes to realize that a router is down. And how will we do this? Well, we're going to use BFD, bi-directional forwarding detection. Now this protocol is not only for OSPF. This works for anything, any protocol that supports it. So let's get right into the command line. And before I forget, don't forget to click that notification bell because I really need you guys to subscribe. So here we go. So we're on router one and we've left the configuration as it was in the, one of the last videos. We basically have it set up where router one is your DR and router two is your BDR. Router two has a priority of 254. So if we go into router three, we will be able to see how router three takes a look at the network. <laughs> one change I did make is that router three is a priority zero. We don't want it participating in the DR election process. So you'll see router one is the DR and router two is the BDR. But what happens when the router goes down? Let's say router one goes down for whatever reason, for maintenance, for any other reason. Let's just say it went down. If you take a look at the dead time here, when a router is configured or OSPF router is configured in a multi-axis broadcast network like this one, everything's plugged into the same switch, same VLAN. We have these uh, hello and dead timers. Now the hello is 10 seconds and the dead time is four times that. That's the default for this type of network or interface. So we keep refreshing and we'll see. Since it's every 10 seconds, this should never get below. The dead time on any of this should never get below 30. So we keep refreshing. You see one, one was 30. If we go back, it right away went up to 40. And we could keep doing that a couple times and you see it just keeps going up every 10 seconds every 10 seconds every 10 seconds but if the interface is down or the router's down let's do that for grins and giggles let's shut this down and let's see what router 3 sees router 3 if i do a show spf neighbor you see it router 1 is now at 28 seconds but it's still listed as the dr so everyone here thinks that router one is the DR. And that's no good because for 40 seconds, it will display itself as the DR. And I keep refreshing, refreshing, and it's DR. Until the time, see three seconds left, and now we hit it again, and one more time, and there it left. So now router two is the DR, correct? As you can see, it goes from full to down, neighbor down, that timer expired. Now we could mess around with these hello times and dead time, but that might not be the best way to do things, okay? Because we would have to set that up everywhere. And there's a reason why these protocols behave the way they do. But there are other solutions that we could use. Now I wanna set everything back up. So I'm gonna do a no shut on this, bring it back. And I will have to do a shut, no shut on this interface here so that, so that R1 becomes the DR designated router. So we'll leave it there. So BFD is very important to configure. And with OSPF, it's very simple. We could set it up where it's just one, two commands actually. Let's see where we are over here. Show IP OSPF. Okay. Show IP OSPF neighbors. All right, so two is now in the DR other state and we are the masters. I, I think I didn't hit enter there, did I? There we go. Alrighty, so now where are we at?
Okay, so now router two is the BDR. That's what we want. And from router three's perspective, what do we have? Sure enough, this is what we want. We want router one to be the DR, router two to be the D, BDR. So it's very simple. We'll go back to router one. Let's turn on BFD. And the way we do this is we go into the router OSPF mode and check this out. You type B, and that's the only command there, B. <laughs> so BFD, and you have to, you can enable it on all interfaces, and that's what we'll do for this one. And then we actually have to go into BFD, and same thing. BFD, and we have to set an interval of how often we want it to, to do. But look, the way BFD works is very cool because it's all in milliseconds. So if we pick the smallest millisecond, then we'll have really fast convergence. So let's say we want our interval to be uh, 50 milliseconds, our receive minimum is 50 milliseconds, and we have to set up a multiplier. So basically it's saying for 150 milliseconds, And we set up the multiplier. So what do we want? How often do we want the interval before it's dead? And that's three. And that is it. And I'm going to copy this command so that I could just copy and paste it. So now it shows that it's been applied. Now the thing is that all the routers have to have this command in there. So let's go into router two. And remember, we need to do router OSPF1, and we have to do BFD all interfaces. And we go into router, and we paste that in there. There we go. And there's a command called show BFD neighbors. Okay. And you'll see that it it gets found that router one is up, up. That's good. Everyone else is down because obviously we haven't configured it on them. But let's go into router R3 because we want R3 to know whether or not it's behaving. So let's say R3 represents everyone here. We don't have to configure every single one. In production, you would. And maybe we'll do two or three just, just for kicks. So let's go into router OSPF1. And we have to do BFD all interface G00. And we paste that command in there. And that is it. And now it's participating. Show BFD neighbors. And here we go. We can see it one, two. Let's do one more. Let's do four. Configure router OSPF1, BFD, BFD all. Interfaces, interface G00, and we have to paste that command in there. So what will we see when we do a show BFD neighbors now that we have four devices? Let's take a peek. Okay. So, why is it not picking up three? Let's see here. Three should be FD. Okay, that's working. Well, it doesn't say four. So, what could it be? Let's see. Let me get out of here. Show BFD neighbors. Oops. Can't type today. Show BFD neighbors. Oh, check it out. So one sees two, three, and four. It sees them as up, up. Hmm, interesting. Okay, the reason is, if you remember from a previous video, and I'll put a link to that video, when you're on a multi-axis network, broadcast network like this, which is the problem that we had, were troubleshooting in the last video, it's that BFD only has to form a neighbor relationship with the... DR and the BDR. And that's why the DR sees everyone. 
it sees one, two, well, not itself, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 11, all those routers. And these are down, not because they're down, it's just simply we have not configured BFD on R5 from R5 to R11. That's the only reason. If I go to router two, let me check the BFD. Same thing. It sees one, it doesn't see itself, of course, three, four, five, six, all the way to 11. But it's, per yeah, it's just perfect there, which is cool. This is what we want. This is what we want to see. And now we could start playing around with this and actually start troubleshooting this or not troubleshooting basically showing you how this works what will happen if the link goes down so if we do a show ip ospf ospf neighbor this is what we see now router one is the dr router two is the bdr okay so let's let's shut down the bdr i mean i'm sorry let's shut down the dr not the bdr because nothing's going to happen then. Uh, so let's go into configuration mode and we'll just shut down the interface since there's nothing else and i'm going to try to go back as fast as possible to r3 so we could take a peek at them okay so that's shut down let's go here and see we get all these messages and what do i see here look at that it's a dr now router 2 it was instantaneously i couldn't even get back fast enough in order for this to come up what's the reason we saw that it was 50 millisecond timer and the multiplier was three so in about 150 milliseconds if that's the way the math works it realized that and it told the protocol hey we are down change your status remember we did a little sample at the beginning of this video where you saw it took four times the hello timer in order for ospf to realize that the dr was down you don't want that in a production network 40 seconds one second is a lifetime when it comes to internet browsing when it comes to anything that we're related you know you know how we are you know that when when we're trying to visit a website and it takes more than one or two seconds to refresh or to load you know you're not visiting that website you know you're not doing it and if you're in a production environment at work, you know, if you're expecting a file, if you're expecting something to come through, can you imagine somebody sends you a message, you see them typing, 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 and they tell you that they sent the message and you never received it? All right, that's how fast, or that's how long one second could be in a network. That's why we have things like this with BFD. Like I said, it works with all protocols and it's very simple to configure it's just for rapid convergence so if we go back to router two which one's the one we shut down no we shut down one correct okay so let's go in here and let's do a no shut okay and what does this guy see now okay it sees right away router one's in a dr other state and now i went to full bfd tells it you know you just better get back up there and there we go it's in a bdr state so let's go here router 2 and let's uh, set this up interface g0 we're going to do a shutdown this time let's go to router 4 so here we go let me let me try to go there as fast as possible <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I wasn't fast enough. It took me too long to switch back to this one, but you could see it immediately became the DR. That's what you want in a production network. Fast, fast convergence. You never want it because these guys here rely on the DR and BDR. They get all their information from these two guys. There's no sense in exchanging information with everyone if you're just on this multi-axis network. Now, there are other ways to get around this. There's other ways for a rapid convergence on a network like this. What could we do to eliminate the need for a DR and a BDR? Well, we're going to discuss that in a future video. But like I keep saying, Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell. I'm going to keep pumping these out, helping you out. Become, uh, We can become together uh, knowledgeable and experts in our fields if we just keep practicing and doing labs such as this. Well, we'll see you next time.